Good day, this is Marty Hernandez, licensed real estate broker. So in this video, we're going to discuss on how to approach real estate sellers when you are finding real estate listings. So before we start, I would like to thank Senorito Maldito for requesting this video. So if you also want to discuss a certain topic, just comment down below. The purpose of making these videos is to help you guys about real estate. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate and comment down below. Also, I would like to invite you to my new tech channel, Coco Martech. So if you're interested with smartphones, gadgets, laptops, computers, please consider supporting by subscribing to Coco Martech. So I'll be putting the link down in the description below. So the first thing to keep in mind when approaching real estate sellers is always be respectful and be professional. So this is kind of self-explanatory. If you want respect, you give respect. You can always be bubbly, energetic, friendly when talking to real estate sellers. But always remember that you should always be professional. Next is transparency is the key. So when you're talking to real estate sellers, whether online or in person, always remember to be transparent and be honest. So remind them that you're an agent and you're looking for properties that you can offer to your clients. If the sellers have questions, remember to answer them honestly. It's better to know that you do not know some answers rather than pretending. So just be honest and be yourself and always be transparent. Next is have a decent profile pictures in social media. So this can be helpful when you are looking for properties online. So if you are messaging certain people or certain sellers, they will look at your profile most probably and if they see that your profile picture is you are naked or you are kissing with someone or something they will not see you as professionals i'm not saying that you should wear coats and ties but you should have at least decent photo wearing a decent shirt having decent lighting since this can have an effect when you are looking for properties online next is ready your signatures so what do i mean by signatures so these are your names your contact information so if you are a licensed broker or licensed salesperson put your id number so these are the information that you usually send to sellers so having a ready signature saves time and you will look more professional next is ask for properties in your territory so why do i mean by this it means that don't look for properties or offer properties that you cannot handle if you have people under you agent salespersons under you this is okay but if you're new to real estate and you're just working by yourself i suggest that you focus on the properties that are near to you next is follow business etiquettes so business etiquettes is a broad topic so it needs a separate video so make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button to get notified for the business etiquettes video so business etiquettes are really important so make sure that you're subscribed to watch that video lastly is to know your questions so i'll be giving out 20 real estate questions that i usually ask to my real estate sellers so make sure to write these questions down or at least remember because they can help you when talking to real estate sellers these can serve as your checklist when finding for properties online or personal the first one is if you're looking for a property online you should always ask if you're talking to an agent or a seller this is to avoid conflicts and confusions among agents because there will be times when you're already on a done deal the deal is already closed and certain agents will just pop up out of nowhere so make sure to make this clear in the starting of your conversation when just starting for looking for properties so this is a very important question so always remember Remember to ask this when looking for properties online especially in social media when a lot of sellers are already marketing their properties there next is electricity so just confirm with the owner who will handle the transferring of the account of your electricity so if you're selling a property or a house and lot make sure to locate which area of the property has sockets because it can be a selling point for your clients next is water source so just like with electricity just confirm with the owner who will be handling transfer the account for water sources also check if there's a water tank and see if it is working know the model how many gallons next is neighborhood safety of course if you're going to ask a seller about the safety of the property more or less he or she will tell that it's a safe property just to sell it my advice is to go around the area and ask or look for information online like online forums to know more about the safety of the area next is flooding so again more or less if you're going to ask a certain seller if the area is flood free or flood prone more or less you will say that it's flood free just to sell the property so my tip to you is to go around the area and ask people or better yet go around the area if it is raining really hard just to confirm and you have a peace of mind that you what you are saying to your clients are true because when the time comes and you disclose that the property is flood free and it flooded it will damage your credibility next is titling status so this is actually a very broad topic 
so I'll be doing a separate video for this but the main the but the gist of the titling is just to make sure that the title is clean or if it has problems to make sure that you do some due diligence about the property so ask documents from the sellers just to confirm if the title is indeed clean or you can go to government agencies to confirm the status of the titles like going to the register of deeds to get a certified true copy of title next is exclusivity so make sure when you're talking to your seller to confirm if you're the exclusive agent of the property or not so next is terms of payment so confirm with the owner if the property is only available to cash or if he's open through bank financing or pag ebig and confirm with the seller if his or her selling price is already the last price or the clients or the buyers can negotiate also confirm if the down payment to the owner can be paid in default payments like monthly payments next is to get all of the contact numbers of the seller and the caretaker so this is important for emergency purposes so if you have a client who's in a rush to buy a property it's better to have a contact number of the caretaker just make sure that you have an agreement with the seller that you can go to the property at any time and make sure to get all of the information or the contact information of the seller next is permission to post so if you're going around the property roaming around the village and you see a for sale sign and you have already talked to the owner make sure to ask permission first to take photos to take videos and to post the property online because there are certain sellers that they are builders and they are avoiding competitors to get ideas of the designs or the layouts of the properties so make sure to ask permission first so next is public transportation so you can ask the owner or anyone around the area on how to get to the property using public transportation since this will be a key on selling the property if the people do not know how to get there how can you sell the property next is street parking so make sure Sure to confirm with the owner and the homeowners association if buyers can park along streets since this is one of the most asked questions when looking for properties next is amenities so ask the owner what are the amenities of the area if you're inside the subdivision or village so ask him or her how to get there or how much is renting the place or the amenities and what are the open hours of the amenities next is nearby establishments again confirm with the owner what are the nearby establishments since the owner is more or less more knowledgeable about the area next is the turnover so confirm with the owner when is the turnover of the property will it be upon the full down payment or the letter of guarantee from the bank and what are the possible conditions for the turnover so next is taxes so make sure to clarify with the owner who's going to pay the capital gains tax or the necessary taxes since not all owners are open to paying the capital gains tax next is know the location of the owner so if the owner is currently here in the philippines there's not much problem about that since you can contact him or her anytime but to make sure what are their preferred contact hours since of course all of us are very busy so you should always understand that so ask the owner if he or she has a representative so make sure to get or secure an spa for that representative in case that the owner is currently residing overseas or in other countries make sure to have an spa if the spa is signed here in the philippines there's not much problem about that but if the spa is signed overseas or in other countries you have to consularize the spa so having a consularized spa will take time so make sure to ask for that so next is selling other properties so make sure to confirm with the owner if he or she has other properties that you can offer to your client the second to the last is to ask if the owner is open for renovation if the buyer requests to so i've had a number of experiences already where the buyer wants to repaint some parts of the house or do something like this about the house so you should confirm with the owner at the beginning if these ideas of renovations is possible or if it's open for renovations as buyers request the last and certainly not the least is asking for your commission so you should always clarify and be clear about the commission on how many percent also ask if the owner is open for overpricing because if you did not disclose this one with the owner and you sold the property at a very high price there's going to be a tendency that the owner will not honor your overpricing and he will give you the certain percentage only so make sure to disclose overpricing with the seller so don't be afraid when asking for the commission or the commission rate so you might be thinking that 
the people or the sellers will think of you as you're just going only after the money but the truth is you're just confirming with the owner on how much is the commission or how much is the commission rate asking for the commission is not actually a bad thing so it will depend on how you approach it so just remember to be respectful and to be professional about it so those are the things that you should remember when you are approaching a real estate seller for looking for properties i suggest that you make a checklist about the questions just in case you meet a seller so you are more prepared when buyers are asking for inquiries about your properties so it's our job as agents to perform due diligence to properties so that whenever buyers have inquiries we can answer them quickly if you also have tips for us that i didn't discuss make sure to comment down below so we can also help one another and also if you want me to discuss some certain topics just comment down below so i can make a video about them again don't forget to subscribe to my channel and coco martech my tech channel so i'll be hoping for your support again this is marty hernandez licensed real estate broker and i'll see you in my next videos